In this presentation, we shall look at multiple regression with Minitab. Our goal is to predict the outcome for a dependent variable based on several independent variables. When we did linear regression, we had one independent variable, and we predicted the dependent variable y based on that independent variable x. Here we're going to have several independent variables. So let's take a look at an example. We have some data. Test 1 data, test 2, test 3, homework, and quiz. You want to use those five bits of data to predict the score on the final exam. Now, some of these pieces of data will be more important than others. Some will be more highly correlated with the score on the final exam. We're going to want to determine which of these five variables are most important in terms of predicting the score on the final. To help us answer that, we're going to go to Minitab. So you'll notice I have the data in C1 through C6. And we're going to take the correlation of the elements in those data sets. So we're going to say core, C-O-R-R, C1, dash C6. And this gives us all the correlations. So notice the correlation between test 1 and test 2 is 0 0.088. The p-value for a significant correlation is 0 0.786. So there is not much of a significant correlation between test 1 and test 2, which isn't surprising. Students are just getting started on the first test. By test 2, one would think that they would have improved dramatically and would have learned how to take exams. But we're concerned about the correlations with the final. So looking here, we see the correlation with the final exam in test 1 is actually negative 0 0.046, which is almost 0. And the p-value is 0.886, so certainly there is no significant correlation between test 1 and the final exam. So I'm going to throw test 1 out as an explanatory variable. But you'll notice the correlation for test 2 is 0.752. The correlation for test 3 is 0.773. The correlation for the homework, even higher, 0.825. And the correlation for the quizzes, even higher, 0.841. So we're going to go ahead and do our regression to try to predict the score on C6. But we're not going to include T1 yet. So our Minitab command is regress C6. How many variables do we want to use? We're not going to use T1. We're going to use T2, T3, homework, and quiz on four variables. And what will those four variables be? Test 1 was C1, so C2, 3, 4, 5. So C2 through C5. And this will go ahead and give us our regression equation. I'm going to ignore these graphs. And we'll scroll up and we'll take a look at what the output looks like. So here's our regression equation. The final exam score is negative 185 plus 1.18 times test 2 minus hmm, 0.656 times test 3 plus 1.47 times homework plus 2.29 times quiz. But then looking at the p-values for the predictors, the constant has a p-value of 0, so that's a significant predictor. Test 2 has a p-value of 0 0.005, again, a significant predictor. Test 3 has a p-value of 0.244, not a very significant predictor. Homework 0 0.007, quiz 0 0.002, also significant predictors. So I want to do another regression equation, this time ignoring T3. So this time my command will be regress C6 on three predictors, C2, which was test 2, C4, which was homework, and C5, which was quiz. We're leaving out test 3 as not being a good predictor. And let's see what the results are for this. So this time our equation is the final is negative 187 plus 1.01 times test 2 plus 1.17 times homework plus 2.13 times quiz. So in a sense, the quiz is the most important predictor of how the person is going to do on the final exam. You'll notice down here we have R square. R square also tells us something about how good our predictor is going to be. The R square is high. So our regression equation here is fairly good. So we've got our regression equation. Let's see how 
close our actual numbers were to what we predicted. So inputting the regression equation, negative 187 plus 1.01 .01 times C2, plus 1.17 times C4, plus 2.13 times C5. We're going to score, store that in C7, and we'll see what that's going to look like. And then let's compare our results. We're going to say print C6, C7. C6 is the observed score on the final exam, and C7 is the predicted score on the final exam. And you can see they're all relatively close, within 5, within 4, within 4, within a couple, within 3. Uh, 6 is off by quite a bit. 7 is off. 8 within 9. 9 within 3. 10 within 3 or 4. 11 within 6. And 12 is off a little bit. But for the most part, our predicted values for C7 are fairly close to our observed values. So we feel pretty good about our regression equation for predicting the score in the final exam based on our most important variables, which in this case for some reason was the second test, the score on the quizzes, and the score on the homework. Okay, our next data set comes from Elementary Statistics by Mario Triola. We have information about bears, their head length, their head width, neck size, their length, their chest measurement, and their weight. And our goal is to predict the weight based on the other five variables. So again, the first thing we're going to look at is correlations to see if there's any we can throw out right away. So we're going to look at the correlation of C4 through C9. And let's take a look at those. We're interested in correlations with weight. Weight and head length had a correlation of 0.834. Weight and head width had a correlation of 0.783. Weight and neck had a correlation of 0.934. That's our biggest correlation so far. Weight and length had a correlation of 0.864. Weight and chest had a correlation of 0.963. And notice the p-values in each case are zero. So all of those are significant correlates, remarkably significant correlates uh, with weight. So we're going to use all of those variables as we do our regression. So our command will be regress C9. And how many variables? One, two, three, four, five variables. And what are they? C4 through C8. And we'll take a look at what that gives us. So this time, what do we have? We have negative 246 minus 0.785 times head length plus 2.82 times head width plus 6.60 times the neck measurement plus 0 0.9 times the length measurement plus 9.11 times the chest measurement. Looking at our predictors, the constant is certainly good. Head length gives me a p-value of 0.183. Head width, a p-value of 0.577, that one I don't think we're going to use. Neck, a p-value of 0.013, length, a p-value of 0.454. Now, there is no one best way of doing this, so we're going to have to decide which variables do we think are most important. I think I'm going to throw out head width and length and see if we get any improvement. So here I'm saying regress C9, weight, on three variables, this time C4, head length, C6, neck, and C8, chest. And let's see what these results look like. So this time, we have an R-square of 0.934. Neck and chest are certainly very good predictors. Head length gives me a p-value of 0.280. I could throw that out, and I could just use neck and chest, but I think I'm going to leave in a third variable just to give us a little bit more information. You'll notice my analysis of variance. F is very large, so we have significance there as well. We have some unusual observations. We have one, two, three, four animals whose predicted score is fairly far off from what we would expect. So we can go ahead and look at those 
by actually running a a let equation to see just how close those things are. So we're going to define C10. We're going to say let C10 equal negative 239 minus 4.79 times C4, which is head length, plus 6.91 times C6, which is neck, plus 9.60 times C8, which is chest. And we'll see just how well we did. Then we can say print C9 and C10. Print C9 and C10. And there's quite a few animals here in our group. So we'll take a look at how close these numbers are. So there's a whole bunch of them here. Obviously, the negative 9.88 must have been a juvenile. So it would have been sensible to leave that one out of the discussion. 80 and 68, fairly close. 344, 307, 416, 419, 348, 367, 166, 174, 220, 237. So we can see for the most part our regression equation is pretty good. So we could, if we had those other variables, we could use it to predict the weight of a bear. Again, though, the earlier input gave us the information where the things were quite a bit off. So uh, observation 13, observation 20, 46, and 53 were problems that we were indeed quite a bit further off than what we expected. Now there is no one perfect way to do this. There's no one perfect way to decide which variables you should include in your regression analysis and which ones you shouldn't. I think it's best to look at correlations and then to look at p-values to determine which ones you want to keep. But there's certainly nothing wrong with keeping one with a p-value that is somewhat large as long as it's not ridiculously large. And that will conclude this presentation.